lovely friends here visiting and returning and old faces reunited. Hi, good morning, everyone. Wow, we don't have a lot of children yet. So I don't know how we're going to fly with this next children's bit. <laughs> what should we do? Oh, so we still go with it? Should we go to should we go into worship? Yeah, there's not there's like four kids. <laughs> 20 will come later. <laughs> but we're going to come to a time of worship. Is that okay? Yeah. How does that sound? Yeah, let's come to a time of worship. Okay, should we all stand? Just to let just to let you know, we are live streaming this online right now, and um, yeah, so you can always rewatch it later again. All right, let's come to a worship time. <laughs> morning church morning okay since we've got a bit of time before the kids come do you guys want to say hi to someone you've never met do what I usually do, so I'll just get you guys to do morning exercise, because I know some of you are not awake yet, i.e. me. <laughs> I'll get you guys to do stretches anyway, okay. Okay, one, two, three, go to your left, okay. go to your right, stretch upwards, go to your left again. Good to your right. And then just twist your body round and round. Oh, hear a lot of clicking going on. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, let's just come to the time of worship. Lord, we just thank you for this time that we can come to church, for our building, our oh Lord God, um, that we can just come and freely worship you, oh Lord God. Lord, I just pray that even as we come this morning, that we'll just worship you, O Lord God. The word this morning, O Lord God, that you've revealed, O Lord, was just worship, O Lord God. Just, just worship your vastness, your goodness, O Lord. Your authority, your grace, O Lord God. Lord, may we just come and worship you, O Lord, with hearts open, arms wide, open, lifted up, O Lord God, with, with just this readiness, Lord, to, to listen to you, to hear you. Lord, may we just create this space, Lord, where you can just come and speak to us, O oh Lord God. Lord, we just pray that even as we sing these songs that are words, O oh Lord God, um, we just pray, Lord, that you just lift up our spirits, O oh Lord God. Just name we pray, amen.
lift my eyes. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes. I lift my eyes to you. Though the world is right, I lift my eyes. Well, there's hope in my heart, and I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I dance, in the shadows I sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I cannot see you with my eyes, let faith arise to you. When I cannot feel your hand in mine, let faith arise to you. God of mercy and love, and I will praise you, Lord. I feel alive with you. In your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I say, and I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Sing the joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I dance, in the shadows I sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. darkness I'll dance in the darkness I'll dance in the shadows I'll sing the joy of the Lord is my strength the joy of the Lord is my strength the joy joy of the Lord is my strength in the darkness I'll dance in the shadows I'll sing the joy of the Lord is my sing the joy the joy of the Lord is my strength. You are my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I dance, in the shadows I sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let's just give Lord a shout of praise. Yes, Lord, you are our strength, you are our joy, Lord God.
Let's just sing those words again. What is our hope? What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our only confidence that our soul to Him belong? Who holds our days within His hand? What comes upon from His command? And what will keep us to the end? The love of Christ. Worship God. Let's just worship Him for for He's worthy. There's no reason that we need to worship God, but just because He is God. What is our hope in life and death? The Christ alone. 
Christ alone, what is our only confidence that our soul belongs? Who holds our day within his hands? What comes apart from his commands? And what will keep us to the end? The love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, say hallelujah. Our hope springs eternal. Oh, say hallelujah. Now and ever we confess Christ you are. Christ our hope. Thank you, Jesus, for uh, saving us and uh, coming back because of your love. We pray, Father, for today's service. May you really speak to us. May you open our eyes and our hearts to hear more of who you are. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. You may all be seated. Um, welcome to the BCEC. Uh, we really, we're really glad that you're here this morning with us for worship and a time of just celebrating God's goodness. Uh, just to let you know, we do start at 9.30. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's a drastic difference between 9.30 and 9.45. Anyway, so we've got a, uh, we're going to have a storyteller time. We're going to watch a cool video about someone called Lydia. Do you know what Lydia's favorite color was? Purple. Yes, like Auntie Isabella. All right, let's watch this. Can we hit the lights? Thanks. If you oh, okay, don't know what happened there. Uh, so we're also, it's the first Sunday of the month this week. If you have a birthday in July, come on up. Little ones and bigger ones. <laughs> come on up, come to the front. We've got a special gift for you if you are July birthday. And we'd love to sing the awesome song of happy birthday for you guys. Let's start off by this side. Uh, is it you or your daughter? When is your birthday? Uh, 26th of July. 26th of July. And what's, when's your birthday? Today. <gasps> Today! Wow! Nice! 27. 27. 18. 18. 20. 20. 10th of July. 10th. 15th. 15th. 23rd. 23rd. So many July birthdays. Shall we sing the birthday song of happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. 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 Yay! Thank you so much. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, oh. Oh, no, no, that's not something. That's something. Uh, so these are all bookmarks now, and there were magnets just now, but these are bookmarks. Uh, we've come to the bottom of the box. But happy birthday. Hope you guys have a great birthday, and you may now be seated. Thank you, July birthdays. When, right now, we will also be uh, dismissing the kids to go off to Sunday school, which is our Explorers Club. So if you have a child that is of a young age, you can go to the green shirt and the red shirt and the orange shirt. The orange shirt is the G Grand Explorers for the older ones. And then the younger ones go to, I think, Edwina, the red shirt one. Yeah. So go on through. Remember to sign your kids in and sign them out after service. While we dismiss them, we are going to run through some quick announcements just to let you know what is happening in our church. There's a lot going on, which is all very, very exciting. Please save the date for our 30th anniversary celebration. Uh, we have closed the pre-orders for the flasks, but if you ask nicely, I'm sure... Um, we can figure something out. But generally, we, are ha we have sent it through to our orders uh, through to the people 
creating them for us, uh, printing them. And then, uh, so yes, we will give you more information if you have pre-ordered. Uh, so that's going to happen. We are still recruiting. We've got a few wonderful opportunities for you to take part in. We are desperately looking for more people to help with Explorers. Um, so we also need helpers. So it's actually quite a lot of fun being with the kids. So if you do want more information, come and speak to myself, Bert, or Ben, and we'd be happy to link you up and train you. Same with the tech team. We always need help with the tech. We need, um, I'm sure all of us are capable of doing tech stuff. We all have phones. We all know how to use technology. So we have no excuse. Let's all be part of this together. Um, so yeah, if you do want to be part of that, either through sound or through the screen, Come and speak to one of us at the back who is also doing it, and we'll be happy to link you up. Likewise, with the welcome team, we'd love to have people just welcome. Uh, all you need is a pretty face, and you all have pretty faces, so come on through and, uh, yeah, come and uh, welcome with us. But that's what we are after right now, and then we've got baptism happening. So that's going to happen on the 4th of September. Um, we're promoting it now so that we have enough time to do baptism classes because it is going to be the summertime and we do know that there's yeah people away and stuff. So if you do want to get baptized, please come and speak to the pastoral team or someone on welcome and we'd be able to give you a form and stuff. We're going to come to a time of offering now. Um, and so I invite the stewards to come forward to pass around the bags. Oh, that's awesome. We got three awesome volunteers helping us today. Um, so if you are here for the first time and you don't understand the meaning of offering, please let those bags pass you by. But offering is just a time for us as Christians to just have an act of worship um, as part of the service for God's glory, um, just to give back a portion to him. And while we do that, I'm going to invite our pastor, Bert, to come on up and uh, lead us in the continuation of the book of Acts. Yay. Uh, good morning. Uh, glad that you guys can be here. Uh, I think there's definitely been uh, big challenges in, in, our, in our life, in our times over these past few years. And uh, we've been going through the book of Acts, and uh, we've gone past, like, Simon the Sorcerer and stuff like that. But we're going to rewind a little bit to this part in Acts chapter 8. And in Acts chapter 8 is when this thing called persecution happens. Up until this point, all the Christians were kind of in Jerusalem. It was the beginning of this early church. They were coming together. They had heard about Jesus. And sometimes we think it's like a small group, but the first group was 3,000 people and then another 5,000 people. So there are a lot of people who are believing in Jesus at this time. And they're meeting kind of in homes. They're trying to figure out what it means to be together. And then they're like, actually, there's a lot of needs. There are orphans. There are widows. And we need to take care of them. And so the apostles decide they're going to find, uh, choose some people to help look after them. And one of these guys is Stephen or Stephen, depending on how you pronounce it. And then... Um, he is a, he's a bold man. He loves uh, Jesus. Uh, and even as he's looking after these widows, he also has a chance to share God's love. In doing so, uh, he gets arrested and dragged out. And what happens is they look at this guy and say, you shouldn't be talking about Jesus. You shouldn't be saying that. That's blasphemy. And the existing Jewish uh, rulers or the authorities in the air decide that this is wrong. And there's this moment here where they put him out in the middle and they stone him. And they kill him. And he dies. And just as he's dying, he looks up to heaven and he's like, you know, God, you know what's true and what's right. After this, this guy gets killed. And the guy who is looking over this, the guy named Saul, watches this happen and approves of it. Saul was kind of this ruler of the um, Jewish uh, church at the time, the early uh, Jew. Jewish uh, temple, and he was serving there, and he was a, a real zealot. He had a real passion for what he felt was right under God. And so for this guy, S Stephen, to be killed, they thought this was the right way to go. And this is where we pick up in Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, it says, And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen 
and mourned deeply for him. When we read this, in, if you've read through the book of Acts, you'll come across this passage, and you'll probably read it pretty quickly. Because after this, you hear about, oh, the church spreads, it's great. But you have to pause and think about what's happened here. You've, you're, like a, you're like a new person. You've come to know this person, Jesus, and you believe him. And suddenly, one of your friends gets killed publicly. And after this, they start invading your homes. They start finding these people who believe them and dragging them out and arresting them. In verse 3, it actually says, But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. For those of you who might have just come from Hong Kong, you might sense what it's like a little bit to suddenly be dispersed, to see things happening that you, don't know, you, don't, you know you feel isn't right. And at the same time, there's this fear that comes spreading across. I think we forget what this persecution was like. When you have someone that you care about suddenly taken away, and suddenly they're coming for you. They're coming to get you because of what you believe. And what do you do then? How do you react? And that's one of the questions that we're asking here. How are we reacting when things go badly? When things aren't going the way we want? And in this case, for those of you who have just come from Hong Kong, you might understand this a little bit more that fear or that presence, or even watching something unjust happen. Now, it's interesting here because what we see what happens is the apostles stay in Jerusalem. In other words, the leaders aren't going to arrest them. They're getting everybody else. They're trying to make everyone scared and say, like, stop believing, stop following in Jesus because he's not worth it. And everyone starts to scatter. This idea of persecution is this thing which, which pushes you out from your comfort zone. And, and here, this persecution is happening because they want to scare people. They want people to turn away from Jesus. In this persecution, what happens is they end up moving away, and they start heading towards the north and the south. And some of these things, I mean, it, it's, you know, maybe 100 miles away from here. Um, it's like moving to another city. But it's not just that. When they're moving, it's like... You're taking your families. You're, you're leaving your, your work or occupation. You have to leave. If you have a shop, you're leaving your shop behind. And all of this because you believe in Jesus. I mean, here in the UK, it's, it's pretty cushy. We don't, we don't have that problem. We complain about some things like, oh, the price of petrol going up, which is a real thing, yeah. Or we complain about Boris Johnson. You can complain about all sorts of things. But this idea of persecution is when things start going really bad, how are you reacting? And are you ready to face that? I, th I think for a lot of us, we're not, we don't know what it's like to really face something difficult. But some of us have started to experience some of those things more recently. Even for something like the pandemic forced us into just trying to deal with things differently. And I know for a lot of us who went through the pandemic, we're like, well, maybe I don't need church anymore. Maybe I just want to do what's something simple or comfortable for me. And I'm, you guys are here, so I'm guessing that's not your case. But at the same time, there's this point where we start forgetting, actually, who really is Jesus and who is it that we really follow. Persecution, when it swept in, was unwanted. It's unexpected. It's difficult. It's painful. It's change. And it's change that's happening in a very, very painful way. And again, if you've just come from Hong Kong, you know what that's like. For those of us who have lived in the UK for a while, we think, yeah, this is okay. If you're coming from Southeast Asia, it is very different. Yes, maybe you have more garden space, but the summertime may be two days of sunshine in a row, and then it might be cold. But it's not just that, is that? It's the culture. It's feeling different, feeling lost. And you're here because you know that there is this persecution coming, that the things that you want for your children or for families isn't still there. And so you come here. And you've got to make something new. You've got to find something new. And for those of us who have already been here, we forget. We just think, oh, these people, they've just come. Oh, house prices are going up. Like, it, it, we're so caught up sometimes in our own situation that we forget what's really happening. Now, we're just talking about Hong Kong and the UK right now. But we talk about persecution, about Christians being forced out of their comfort zone. That's happening all over the world. 
happening in such painful ways. The how do you deal with that? And what does it mean for us? I know whenever there's unexpected change that we're confronted with, normally how I deal with it is you know, we complain, we're unhappy, we want things to go back to normal, we're like, why are these things in my way? I just want to do what I want to do. We don't want to face any problems because we want our lives to be smooth. And it's fair. I agree. I think, I think if it was up to us, our life would be as straightforward as possible. The money would easily come in. We could spend. We could, it would be great. But in life, it, it doesn't seem to be that way. And when the hardships come, how are you going to react? See, this is a change that was forced by persecution. It's not a change you intentionally took part of. It's a change that you were just forced into. And for some of us, we are facing those kind of situations. We want something to happen straightforward, but at the same time, it's not happening. We're forced into a situation that we're not ready for. The second thing that happens here is that they're scattered. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. This, this idea of scattering, this, it's, it's, it's actually pretty, you have to understand this, this idea of that you're, the whole idea of scattering is that you're not with your friends anymore. You're alone. You're being spread out. And this idea of them being spread out is like, so they're moving off to Samaria and different parts of Samaria and Judea and all over. They're not staying in Jerusalem anymore. You're forced out. I think one of the benefits, th praise God, thankfully, uh, for a lot of the BNOs, they find, oh, actually, my friends that I never see in Hong Kong have decided to also move here. We're all in Sully Hall together now. It's great. Um, there are some positive aspects of that. But the other part of scattering that happens sometimes is suddenly we feel very alone. And even if you might have some of your friends here, there's still a sense of I'm alone. I'm doing this by myself. No one understands. What are we doing? How are we moving forward? What am I supposed to do next? The pandemic really did that for us. The pandemic scattered us in a way that was really weird. We didn't really scattered. We just stayed in the same place, which meant we didn't come together. We didn't see each other. We couldn't encourage one another. And you had that still, that same sense of loneliness. Now, if you had a family and you were with your family, at least you had that unit. But if you were single or you're on your own or you're living by yourself or you're the only Christian in your home, you had that strong sense of, I'm by myself. And even though I know the church exists, I feel scattered. Now, we're thinking about that idea of scattering. You can also think about what it feels like emotionally or mentally, where things aren't neat or tidy anymore. Everything feels like a mess. Everything feels out of control. And maybe for a lot of us in our lives, we feel like everything's just all over the place. And after the pandemic, you're still trying to put things together. Your mental health is trying to still pull things together. But the threads are everywhere. And you don't know what to do. This is what it was like for these early believers. They watched a friend of theirs who was helping widows. Like, this, he's not a bad person. He's helping widows get killed. And suddenly people are coming, knocking on the door, saying, do you believe in Jesus? dragging you off into prison. And when you're being taken to prison, you're talking husbands, wives, the children are left behind. And then they're just there. They don't know what's going to happen. They know their friend got killed. Maybe they're next. So a lot of them start running, right? So they start fleeing, and you feel alone. How would you deal with this situation? If someone came up to you, knocked on your door, and you knew that was the case, do you believe in Jesus? You may, oh, uh, depends. Uh, who's asking? I don't know, because for a lot of us, actually, even I mean, it's, no one's even coming to persecute us. But your coworker at work, oh, what do you do this work weekend? Oh, you know, mowed the lawn. Like, we're not even bold enough to proclaim Jesus in that small case. Like, that's not even persecution. That's just a conversation. Someone you know is in need, you offer to pray for them. No, oh, no, I don't want to, you know. We, we're not even facing that kind of hardship, and we're already scared to proclaim the name of Jesus. We just want what's comfortable for us, and we forget whether it's worth it at all. For them, they're scattered, they're separated, they're scared. And I think... How would we might have reacted? We might have shut down, shut off, shut out, or even shut up. Is that how it's been for us as Christians 
since the pandemic is kind of wound down before it starts again, I don't know. Have we stopped having any courage or boldness to live for God? We've just settled into this, well, I've just scattered and moved into a new place. You know what's funny about this scattering, about this persecution that's moved out? In the history of Israel, it kind of happened before. It was called the exile. During the time of the exile, the armies came in, took people, moved them away, and they scattered all the Jewish people. They scattered them so they wouldn't be able to come together. And what happened then is the people, they just started to marry. They started to just stop worshiping. They just started to be among the people, just blending right in. And there are a few people like Daniel who was still praying up in the, in the corner or Ezekiel or some of these prophets. But for the most part, everyone started to just settle. Are, are, are we just, how long have you been a Christian? How, how long have you guys been in this country? Maybe some of you guys have only been a, a week, a month, six months. Some of you guys have been here for 10, 20 years. And we're part of this culture. Are we, have we just totally settled into being in the West? that we lost sight of actually we belong to Christ, that we're heavenly people, that we're ambassadors. And I tell you, the longer you settle here, at the same time, it is slightly more peaceful, but that discomfort of what is my real purpose, what am I really doing with my life, just keeps getting louder and louder. I mean, of course, we try to fill it with things, but it doesn't satisfy, and you wonder why it's not satisfying. Is because our home is really in heaven. And if you're really missing heaven, you want to talk about it, you want to share about it. Even the Hong Kongers, you still like to talk about Hong Kong, right? You like to come together and meet with other people who speak Cantonese because it feels good. When I meet another American, it feels weird, but at least I'm like, oh, I can understand you because we speak the same accent. Like it's, there is still something about that. How would you have reacted in this situation? And how are you reacting now? I'm spending a lot of time thinking about, about the church and what's going to happen. And in, right now, it's a, it's a bit of a midpoint. I can look at the 20 years previous and how the churches and Chinese churches here in the UK have grown and where they've fallen short. And I can look ahead to the next 20 years and predict, please, let's not make the same mistakes. But the biggest mistake from that previous generation that we didn't have was we didn't raise disciples. People just got really comfortable coming to church. They didn't feel like being a, a leader or helping to help the church grow or being a blessing was their responsibility. They just wanted a pastor to look after them and then teach them and gain more knowledge, and then that was it. And we have a 20-year, well, actually, no, sorry, I'm older than that, right? So it's like 30, 40-year history of the first batch of Hong Kong immigrants who didn't have the courage or weren't inspired or weren't pushed into saying, how can I grow in ministry? How can I take that step of faith? And so then these English congregations have always struggled around the country. It's like this. But I can look 20... 40 years from now, like the kids of your kids, who will have many, much more Chinese friends than the BBCs here had the first time, wanting to have these communities, but without discipleship, without that boldness, without choosing to really follow Jesus here and now, or that thing's not going to happen. And for those of us who have been here for a long time, have we just settled into just being like, well, okay, well, I come to church Oh, the Sunday school's okay, but the community's all right. I wish it could be better. Or is it really like, I, God, what, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to live? Because we're all pursuing maybe our career or our hope and maybe looking for jobs, maybe we're looking towards retirement. What does God want from you? You know what these guys did? You know what it says in the scripture? And this is why we pass over this persecution so quickly. Because it says, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Like, if it was me, if I got kicked out of my home because uh, people were, like, arresting me because I'm a Christian, when I go to a new place, I'm going to keep a low profile, right? I'm going to be quiet. These guys, they go out there, well, hey, I'm in a new place. I want to tell people about Jesus. I, I, 
that is that is that you? I don't think that's any of us. Right, maybe Yang Bong. I think that's the only guy we keep looking at. But the rest of us, I think the rest of us, we go to a new place. We're not talking about Jesus first thing. I'm forced to it because they ask me what my job is, and I have to say, well, I'm a pastor. And they say, oh, what's that? And then I have to talk about Jesus. But for, for the rest of us, like, I, that's just my, my career. I'm forced in that situation. But I can even feel that sense of, like, well, I, I don't, I don't want to make you think too much about Jesus. But why not? Isn't, isn't Jesus amazing? Isn't Jesus worth it? Even if you've come over here and you're new to this country, but you found church, you know that that's because of Jesus has helped you. For those of us, we've forgotten what it was like when we first came, and you made those connections. And the reason you're here in the church at the beginning is because you knew Jesus was there. And there are times in our life where we stop feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit. We feel like, ah, oh, it's just a chore. I don't know what's going on with this Christian thing. And you forget Jesus is incredible. The power of your God in our lives, it is so precious. And we get so caught up with, oh, my life is not happy. I don't have, I feel pressure. We wouldn't stand with this persecution. The thing about persecution is that actually in doing so, it does reveal where your heart lies where things are. When that pressure comes, how are you going to react? When the pressure comes, are you going to freeze up? Are you just going to give up? Are you going to collapse? Or are you going to be like, okay, actually, God, I cling to you more. I look to you. What are you going to show us? See, for these guys, when they saw this uh, scattering, it wasn't a problem. It was opportunity. There was new opportunities here for them that they didn't have before. If you've just come from Hong Kong, these churches here, they're very different than your Hong Kong churches, aren't they? Like maybe there's a lot less people here. Our building is a lot more crowded. And uh, you, you, know, you have to engage more. But that's an amazing opportunity to say like, actually, God, God my, my relationship with you, maybe I've been comfortable. I really want to take hold of it now. I want to see how I can grow and learn and be in the different culture and, and bring your life into that space. And for those of us here who have been so complacent, what are you, what are you waiting for? What, what are we waiting for to happen? If you're waiting for me to come up to you and say, oh, you should do this, you should know by now I'm very bad at that and I can't seem to get anyone to do anything even if I do tell you. You have to start saying, okay, God, I really want to live for you. I want your name to be declared. I want to see your life press forward. And maybe you're a teenager, you've been coming to church, you're here because your parents have made you. And you're like, well, I don't really know. Whose responsibility is it to know Jesus? You all want to grow up so fast, but you want to discover actually what is the most significant person. And that's Jesus. Your parents believe because of something they've experienced before in the past, because of what they've learned, what they've known. You've got to start asking the same question, okay, God, if you're real, what does that mean? What are the implications of not just my present, but my eternity? It's this real sense of moving forward. That persecution which drove them out opened up opportunity and really said, okay, how am I actually going to move forward? What am I actually going to do? Or am I just going to stay stuck? The pandemic is kind of... I, no one can tell if it's winding down or starting up again. We don't know how many Omicron, if we're going to get to, like, number 900 variant, whatever. And, and a lot of us, I know what we're doing. We're just waiting. We're waiting for it to, like, to finally pass. Like, okay, once, you know, maybe Omicron, whatever. Maybe then. But actually, God is saying, uh, really? I think the time to move forward is now as well. Maybe you feel scattered in your heart. Maybe you feel scattered in your soul or your mind. And, and, and when you feel scattered, what you want to do is, go, I'm just going to wait here. I'm just going to wait here, and maybe things will calm down. It's a funny thing. When I have a messy room or a messy house, no matter how long I sit there, it doesn't get any cleaner. Like, I'm just, you know, just going to sit here, and then maybe it'll clean itself. And, you know, Mickey Mouse doesn't show up and wear a hat, and suddenly everything starts sweeping itself up. Maybe my wife comes home and starts cleaning it. I don't think that's magic as much as I'm going to be in big trouble later. In other words, 
in things being so scattered, at the same time, it is that responsibility to say, okay, God, I know that is the case. What changes do I need to make? And how can I be responsible for that? To really mature as a Christian, it, actually, to mature as a child from a teenager to an adult, it is then taking responsibility for what is in front of you. As a Christian, to become a mature believer is taking responsibility for the life that God has given you and saying, okay, God, I am choosing to walk with you. The changes that you want, I know I want God to just miraculously zap me and fix everything and make everything really smooth. I have no problems whatsoever. All my sinful behavior is just cast away just so easily. And it's amazing. After you have a great time of worship or a prayer, you feel that power. Then you go home and the hard work begins because things get scattered again. You're saying, okay, God, well, let me help. Teach me how to be mature, to be responsible, to keep walking, keeping in step with the Spirit, keeping holy, following you. The second part of that and moving forward is this idea of stepping out. Sometimes the best way to sort out the scattering is to actually head in a direction. Head in a direction. If your house is messy, you don't just start by like, I'm just cleaning everything all at once. You have to pick a direction. Like, I'm going to start here and start with the toilets. Or I'm going to start here in this one drawer. I'm going to just organize this one space. In your spiritual life, where are you going? What are you doing? What is the direction you are stepping towards? And, and, and the most simple one is, okay, God, let me just start with this. Let me spend some time with you every morning. If that's too hard, if that's like, I can't do it, I'm not very good by myself. And you know, eh, yeah, here's, here's one. Every Sunday when I come to church, I want to pray for one person. I want to pray for one person at church. I know it sounds crazy, right? Actually praying for someone at church. Like, well, we don't do that. We just have a corporate prayer. I just say, every Sunday, I want to pray for one person. That starts to move you in a direction. Or God, you know, actually this week, you know what? I want to spend just five minutes. I want to sing a song to you in worship. Not, not, not to sound impressive or anything. I just want to sing a song of worship to you just every morning, just something small. It just starts getting you going in a direction. And maybe you're, you're like, Bert, those are too easy. I'm doing that all the time. I sing 100 songs. I'm reading so much Bible. You know, God, I want to, this week, I want to have one opportunity where, where I share about you. I want to share my testimony once a week with someone. I want to be able to share what you've done in my life with someone once a week. Like, it actually doesn't sound impossible, right? Some of those things might force you to actually talk to someone. Okay, that might be a bit challenging. But that's how you start moving forward. In doing so, it will increase your faith. I think about these, these people that were scattered. They could have just been scared. They could have just stopped where they were. But instead, as they went out, they saw Jesus do more and more th amazing things. What happens after this is they start seeing amazing miracles happen some more. The other part about this passage is that when it talks about scattering, it's that same idea of when Jesus talks about scattering these seeds. Some of us might take root and grow, whereas some of us might stop and just get choked by the things of this world and find ourselves giving up. Like, what kind of seed are you that God has scattered? Are you going to take root and you're going to grow? There's this quote by this guy called uh, William Wilson. It says, little did the followers know then that the impetus for this far-flung evangelism would be persecution. In other words, the catalyst that would move them forward to spreading God's word was persecution. These refugees, scattered like seed, take root elsewhere and bear fruit. God is able to use even persecution of his own people to work his purposes. I think that perspective can change the situation that we're in from hopelessness to hope. Instead of feeling like we've been trapped in this sad position and it's so depressing, let's hope that actually Jesus is like, I can turn this into something that produces great fruit and great blessing. So don't give up. Don't lose sight. Don't lose hope. And it brings us back then to that final or that first question that we had. How are you facing these times? How are you facing the situation that you're in right now? 
And when you come before and you ask that question, you think, and you just come before Jesus and say, you know what, actually, in the deepest part of my heart, I feel tired or I feel hopeless or I feel scared. As you bring that to Jesus, you can then have him start saying, you know what, he is with us. He is true. He is faithful. He is beyond the span of history that he knows that he is encouraging you to move forward, and you begin to be filled up with this hope that actually his spirit is with us. This whole series that we're doing, this Acts of the Holy Spirit, is trying to teach us how to be in this relationship with God so that his Holy Spirit moves us forward towards action instead of being stuck, shut off, shut up, or shut in. We are alive with him. Every, every week, the urgency in me is getting louder. That, that we have to really start being alive with Jesus now. Because you guys are the Christians here, but the number of n- non-believers is in- increasing. Are, are, are we taking those chances to be alive? Are we starting to grow now and invest because in 10 years' time, something else is going to happen, and we have to be ready for that too, to really be alive. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, um, gosh, you are really so gracious and so amazing. We know that in these times we've faced, it's been hard and it's been sad, and there have been moments where we have to just, just try to take it all in. But at the same time, Lord, we can see that your early church faced even stronger persecution, even darker times, and yet wherever they went, Lord, they were sharing your truth and your life. So, Lord, will you wake us from our slumber, from our idleness, from our own fears or from our doubt? And as we stop and we ask, how are we facing these times, Lord, will you minister to us, please? Will you spur us onward? Will you give us your hope and your vision? For those of us who are who have not been asking who you are, Lord, will you make us hunger for the truth of you, Lord? Will you let your spirit act in us, Lord, so that we can be your agents of your truth? We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you come and respond in worship, again, if you would like to receive prayer or just be uh, prayed for, uh, I'll be up in the front. I'm happy to pray for you guys. Let's come and worship. We still got quite a bit of time, so let's just spend some time to just just be really challenged by what Bert has said. And the dead, the dead, and the, the mass is not going to clean itself. So, you know, we don't want to walk out of church just going back to life. This is something that we do in the worship ministry: is that we we write down goals and things they want to do or even in life group. Um, if you need to take out your phone or a pen of paper, just, just write down what God has really challenged you to do, what, what sort of area he's wanting you to do the worship him every day, to read the Bible every day. Just
just going to sing this song called For the Sake of the World. It says, I'm laying down my life, giving up control. I surrender all. I'm leaving your glory for the earth. If you to continue to be in his presence, be challenged by, you know, why why are we not sharing the gospel? Why are we not excited about God? by singing, you can respond by standing, um, or even just going to bed for prayer. If anyone's got a word to share, just, just feel free to come out and pray for the church or just share a word if you have one. that Lord it'll be a prayer Lord that you just use it Lord that you just burn a fire Lord for this for this lost soul so Lord that even as we are scattered oh Lord God will not be afraid oh Lord God but Lord we'll just see it as an opportunity to spread your gospel Lord give us the boldness oh Lord God and the excitement oh Lord of of that salvation oh Lord like, like that video that we watched at the beginning where Lydia Lord was just in tears oh Lord seeing just hearing about your goodness oh Lord God and I know it's, it's, it's a cartoon, but to see the disciples just cry for a lost soul being saved, for a lost soul being baptized, Lord God, that's, that's probably the reality of it, Lord God, that, you know, the heavens rejoice when, when someone come to you, Lord God. We just pray that even as we sing this chorus, Lord God, that you just stir up our hearts, Lord, stir up our souls for the loss, Lord God. I just encourage you to stand up and just respond.
Some people are feeling like they don't know where to start. They're just a bit lost. It's just, and it's easier to, to you know, there's so much mess to know where to start. Just, just leave it then. But I think God just really want to encourage us to just take small steps, small steps. It doesn't have to involve, you know, going out and spreading the gospel right away. I just want to encourage you if that's you and that's, that's stirring something in your heart. Or you just feel like you can't relate, just, just say a prayer or, you know, just want to find someone next to you to pray with. God is here and don't, don't miss it on to you. There's more than Bert, there's Ben, there's Anzi, there's, there's other people in church that can pray with. For the 
sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Let a flame in my soul for every eye to see. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Lord, I pray for um, every single one of us here standing right here, Lord God. Lord, that you just put us in an awkward situation this week, this month. That you, you, you open up the door Lord, for us to even share with our, our friends or even a stranger that we, we believe in you, oh Lord God. That we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That we believe that Jesus died for us. That we proclaim that we're a Christian unashamedly, oh Lord God. I pray for these opportunities to just present itself. To be challenged, to be challenged to step out of our comfort zone, to to not just be a consumer, Lord God, but to be challenged, Lord, to, to be excited about our faith again, Lord, to be excited about that time where we really taste it and see your goodness, Lord God. May we, may we be opposed by that opportunity to share. May our spirit leap and butterflies happen in our stomach, Lord God, because we're able to share your goodness, Lord, and how you have been good to us, to, to somebody we know or may not know. And as we sing the next song, it says, Yes, I will. Just, let's just be a respondent, you know. God, I'll, I'll, I'll lift you high in the lowest valley. I'll, I want to praise your name. I want to sing for joy despite my situation.
As we just come together, I also feel um, the need to just pray for, for Hong Kong, for our brothers and sisters here. Lord, we know that what has happened in Hong Kong has been heartbreaking. There are so many questions about its future, its past, Lord, and even its present. But Lord, we know that you are victorious. And even in this persecution, Lord, you have scattered for your name to be great, for your name to be declared. So continue to do your healing in the hearts of those who are displaced. Continue to proclaim your victory over this world. Though even though it seems as if evil is winning, you have overcome. We pray for those of us then who are here, who have been placed here, Lord. May your fire burn in us. Yes, Lord. May your victory be so evident in our life, Lord, that we walk in triumph. And we declare in triumph because you are our victorious king. So now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Please have a seat. Uh, remember to pick up your children. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next week.